I got a haircut. In my mind, it looks kind of like Lauren Cohan, kind of like Alexa Chung, kind of like Taylor Swift, and kind of like Rosiana from Miss Sex Rojas before her hair got longer. But enough about my new fashion choices, this is a book review of James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room. I read this book for the Writers of Color book club last month, and I will link the Goodreads group in the description below. Giovanni's Room is a story of David, a homosexual American who's struggling with his sexuality while living in Paris. He's engaged to this girl, she went off to Spain, and he becomes involved with a man named Giovanni. And of course, bad things happen. The entire story is told by David, the main character, and he's looking back at the events in Paris and in his life that have led him to this moment, because the night he's telling you the story, something big is gonna happen the next day, what he calls the most terrible day or morning of his life, I believe. This book was published in 1954, and to my knowledge it takes place during that time period. This book has been praised for its complex dealings with the issue of homosexuality. James Baldwin himself was homosexual, and I believe this is one of the earliest works to deal with homosexuality in this way, if that makes sense. It's personal, it's heartbreaking, and it's just a little tragedy of a novel. To begin with, the prose is fantastic. It's older prose, if that makes sense, but it's not that difficult to follow, and it definitely becomes easier to follow once you get into the rhythm of the book. The whole atmosphere of the book is very moody and dark and kind of foggy in a sense. James Baldwin does a really great job of setting up the Parisian atmosphere and sort of using that to symbolize David's atmosphere, if that makes sense. Paris is murky and a bit sinful and hard to figure out and complex and multifaceted and always covered in this layer of fog, and David's kind of like that as well. The atmosphere that James Baldwin paints also makes the book read kind of like a painting you would come across in a really prestigious museum of art. That might just be the Parisian setting. What I found really interesting about this book is that while David is very uncomfortable and possibly in denial about his sexuality, he still spends a lot of time immersing himself in Parisian gay subculture and seems very knowledgeable about it. He frequents a gay bar and he has a relatively close male friend that he mostly keeps around for money who has a habit of going after younger men. It's hard to pin down exactly how David feels about himself before he meets Giovanni, and it's also a little hard to pin down how he feels about his sexuality and who he is after he meets Giovanni. David as a character, on the whole, is very complex and hard to figure out. His emotions and thought processes aren't really that straightforward, and that makes him really interesting to analyze, and it's really rewarding to read a novel told through his perspective. The title of the book, Giovanni's Room, refers to Giovanni's small, cramped apartment, I guess you would call it, where David and Giovanni spend a lot of their time. David's very uncomfortable in this room. He describes it as dirty and cramped, and obviously it's symbolic. I mean, if it's the title of the book and James Baldwin spends that much time in the work talking about it and setting up scenes in this room, it has some metaphorical significance. From what I can gather, the room is symbolic of David's own disgust with this inner part of himself and his disgust and uncomfortableness with his own sexuality, but I mean my analytical skills are a little rusty and that seems a little too obvious. So if you guys have any idea what you think Giovanni's room symbolizes, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to talk to you about it. I had never heard of this book before, The Writers of Color Book Club. If you're into classics, you should definitely pick this up because I feel like it's kind of a lesser known classic. In conclusion, I really enjoyed this book. It's not like anything I've ever really read before. I had fun analyzing it, but I don't really have a whole lot to say about it other than I enjoyed it. So I'd like to know your guys' thoughts, what you took away from this book, what you had fun analyzing, what metaphors and symbols you pulled out. We can discuss in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will talk to you later. Bye.